Every day, thousands of Manitobans use some type of machine at their work. And when you use a machine that often, it can be easy to forget the hazards involved. So let's look at one of the basic parts that keep you safe when operating a machine. Machine safeguards. Using a machine without proper safeguards can lead to injuries that range from minor to life-altering. The consequences could even be fatal. Hazards presented by unguarded machines include moving parts such as belts, gears, rollers and chains, electrically charged parts, entanglement areas and pinch points, surfaces with freezing or burning temperatures, open flames, energized electrical cables or components, debris or material ejected from the machine or being fed into the machine, items falling into a machine. With so many different types of machines, it's no surprise that there are many different types of guards. The hierarchy of controls lists five types of safeguards that can be used alone or together to help protect workers. It's your employer's responsibility to do a risk assessment on each machine in your workplace and put the proper safeguards in place to eliminate or control the hazard. The best way to safeguard against a hazard is to eliminate it or substitute a safer process. For machines, this means eliminating pinch points, entanglement areas, and automating tasks like material handling. If the hazard can't be eliminated, the next step to consider is engineering controls. For machines, these include fixed barrier guards and safeguarding devices. Fixed barrier guards are designed so that workers can't go over, under, around, or through to reach moving parts, harmful liquids, or possible projectiles. If there are gaps in the guard, the machine may also be equipped with a compliant AOPD, or laser light curtain system. A fixed barrier guard is firmly attached and can't be removed without a tool. Before removing a guard, always follow lock out safe work procedures, removing energy sources from the machine. There are other types of safeguarding devices that are not fixed. A worker can access a potentially hazardous area with their hands or entire body. However, these types of proper safeguarding devices won't let the machine start until a worker is clear of the danger area. Many machines are equipped with an interlock device, which stops the machine if the safeguard is lifted. Some safeguarding devices may also limit the movement of the machine or require the worker to control the power with two hands, so if they let go of the controls with one or both hands, the machine stops. In addition to barrier guards, emergency and lockout devices, and other safeguarding devices, safeguard methods include safe work procedures, training, and PPE. Used in combination with other safeguards, these strengthen worker protection. Awareness methods can be part of machine safeguarding. Splash shields, flashing lights, strobes, beacons, audible warning devices, warning signs and decals, and barriers that restrict access. They all exist to make you aware of a potential hazard. Proper training and following safe work procedures are also part of machine safeguarding. Because safety starts with knowing how to use a machine safely, including any safeguards required. You should be trained on why and how guards protect you and how to do a pre-use inspection check on the machine and its guards to ensure they're in good working order. Finally, 
Personal protective equipment, or PPE, may be part of the safeguards required to help prevent an injury from certain machines. Also, be sure that long hair is tied back and no loose clothing or jewelry is worn. But you should never rely solely on PPE. It's the last line of defense. You still need to receive proper training, learn safe work procedures, and be aware of the potential hazards involved with each machine you operate. No matter what type of machine you use, there are some simple things to remember before you start working. Make sure guards are in the proper position, in good condition, and provide adequate protection from the moving and hazardous parts. Don't bypass a guard to save time. It's there for a reason. And if you remove a guard to do maintenance work, be sure to remove all energy sources by locking out the machine first. This will ensure it can't be started when the guards are removed. Always be sure to put the guards back properly before you re-energize and use the machine. Remember, all machinery should undergo regular inspections as defined by the manufacturer. And all guards should meet legislated standards. For more information about types of guards for specific industries, read the Guide for Safeguarding Machinery and Equipment found at safemanitoba.com.